All right, here we go. So, I'm gonna do this scroll compressor today. Um, I had to change a few things since our last video. Number one, I changed the camera. So I'm not using the DVR camera anymore. In the last video, I had real problems with the focus. I actually went through this whole video with that camera and I ended up throwing it out, the, the video, not the camera. Um, I just wasn't working. So I'm using my iPhone. I've had really good luck with it. So we're gonna keep using that. Um, so change that. Um, I've ground this open already. Uh, so the top is already cut off of this. So I'm sparing you the, the grief of watching me use the grinder. Um, also, uh, the last video I had this nice little Milwaukee grinder battery M18 fuel. Um, and I burned it up. I burned it out. Uh, so, uh, and I can't bring it back. I can't go into Home Depot right now because of COVID. I can't bring it back. So, um, using my nice rigid corded, um, did a great job. It actually worked much better um, getting through that. This is really thick. This steel is really thick. Um, so it really, uh, really took a beating. So, a um, couple of things uh, that uh, I had to do. Um, I actually did this video with the iPhone, the whole video, and then I realized that it didn't press record. So, I don't know, it's what, probably like take five. Um, but a uh, nice day outside, sun shining. Uh, Hopefully not too many distractions out behind me, um, but we'll see, uh, it's not, not too bad. So I'm gonna grab the camera and we're gonna go over a few things. So uh, like I did with the um, the reciprocating compressor, we're gonna go over the nameplate. So I'm gonna show you the nameplate. So over here, and uh, so you'll see how much better this will uh, focus. So model number is ZF18KVE-TFE-262. The TFE actually tells you the voltage, um, but this is a uh, three phase 575. That's uh, here, you just can't see it. Uh, it's worn off. 575 volts, uh, three phase. So um, this is a three phase compressor, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, lots of information there. So. All these websites, Copeland, Tecumseh, um, they, uh, you can get a lot of information off of these. So this actually came from the Emerson website, Copeland, Emerson. Um, so, you know, performance information, mechanical information, electrical information. And the reason I did this is because this actually shows me the winding resistance, 3.56. Um, so I'm actually going to ohm this out and I'm going to show you. Uh, because it's three phase, all three windings are the same or should be the same. Um, so that information, anytime you need that information that's there, you used to have to carry books and books and books around to uh, do all of that. Um, so I'm just going to spin this and show you. Um, so there's the electrical terminals there, three, three electrical terminals. Um, so before I do that, I just wanted to also go over the connections. So this actually has three ports on it. So we have suction here, the larger suction fitting, discharge. This is liquid injection. A lot of times scrolls need liquid injection to, uh, to help cool the motor. So this particular one had liquid injection on it. Um, compressors will come with different styles of Fittings welded, flanged. Um, uh, this happens to be Rotolock, so I think I showed you on the previous compressor. So that's a Rotolock valve. Um, so this will actually thread right onto this Rotolock fitting here. So it's uh, just like that. If I can get it to start. I'll start because I got the little red plug in there still, silly. There, this should work better. There, so you tighten it down. I think I mentioned on the last one that these have a Teflon seal. 
I'm actually going to do a video on service valves and uh, you know, we'll cover things like front seat, back seat, crack, and what all those terms mean. Um, so you can actually see the little ridge inside there that, uh, that, that seals with the Teflon ring there. And you can replace these Teflon rings. Um, so this happens to be a Rotolock. So, you know, down the road I will. A little bit more time on the valves. So I'm just gonna go back to my stand. Put this back in the stand. And uh, move over a little bit here so I can focus on the terminals. So I think on the page there, it's at 3.56. So what I'm using this is actually an old meter, um, an old amp probe meter, but it works. Um, these leads, I just got these uh, last fall, but instead of having the needles on them, they actually have clips on them. So actually really good for checking resistance. Um, so I'm gonna set my meter to ohms. You see that without the glare. Ohms because nothing's connected, it's showing OL. Um, so let me just set my meter down and I'm gonna clip one lead on here and one lead on here. Yeah, I said it was easier, right? right there. Oh. On there. And Our sheet said 3.56, we have well, 3.6, 3.7, 3.5, it's varying up and down a little bit. So right, pretty much right on 3.6 if we take the average. So that winding is good. So I'm actually just gonna take one of these and switch it. Put it over there. And this takes a minute to level out, but there we go, 3.6, look at that. So this compressor is actually ohming out. We'll do one more, do the third one. And uh, clip that on there. And here we end up with 3.6. So this tells me that the windings are good. The other check I would do is uh, terminal to ground, each terminal to ground. And uh, when I do that, I should get OL. I'm not going to do it, but that's what I should get. That's that's the proper. If I get anything to ground, then I know that the winding is grounded, and um, more than likely I'd be blowing fuses. Um, so a quick little electrical check there, because in the field you're not going to cut the top off of these compressors, right? Um, so usually you want to try to do as much diagnostics as you can before you start. Just gonna back this up a little bit so that gave us some information there as far as that goes so let's take the top off of this and uh, see what happens so like I said I have cut this already so I'm going to just remove this and uh, there. So, <clears throat> a little bit different view from the reciprocating compressor. They usually, uh, this is, is, is configured differently. You know, when we cut the top off the reciprocating one, the motor windings were up here. And this one, the motor windings are down here. They're actually pressed into this shell. And if I wanted to get them out, there's a weld seam down here. So if I wanted to get them that out, I would just... I'd have to grind two spots, top to bottom, and uh, then I could pull it out. I'm not gonna do that with this one. Um, another little bit of an aside, uh, when I sh showed you the motor windings on the um, reciprocating compressor, this is the stator out of that compressor. I'll just make sure that I'm getting it in view here. 
I cut the uh, the copper out of it. So the heavy, heavy iron core uh, stator rotor goes in here. So just not too often you get to see that. So I thought I would show you that. Um, so for those of you that think about scrapping at all, think about, because uh, there's a, you know, copper in the windings, right? Think, oh man, I could take that out and get some money for it. So that probably took me about six hours um, to get them out. Uh, so what do you, well, you might get, what, 10 bucks maybe? Um, so is it cost effective? That's, you have to decide that if you're, if you're a scrapper person, then um, you need to make that decision. But, you know, it's not all that easy. So anyways, let me, uh, let me grab my camera here again, because this is pretty cool. Just um, what I found here. So as soon as I took this top off, I noticed something. So discharge, discharge port, right? So discharge line and uh, comes around, comes around, comes around. And as soon as I took the top off, I noticed, hey, these bolts are missing. And this line was just sitting loose. So basically this was just pumping discharge right back into the suction. The suction is sort of the whole common area inside the compressor. So this suction stub here just goes into the whole body, common body of the compressor. Discharge comes out here and goes out the port there. So, I mean, this is why this compressor failed. And, you know, obviously um, there's a lot of, this has been really hot and a lot of little tiny metal fragments in here. It's really, really quite dirty. Um, but I'm also going to take this apart. So um, put my stand back here, camera back in the stand. And uh, I have loosened the bolts already, but I'm just going to show you that. So there's four bolts holding the top of this scroll down. And then I can pull this top off and actually show you the, uh, the scroll. So hopefully you've done a little bit of research and you understand how the scroll works. Two, two scrolls, one stationary, one orbiting. So the top one will clean flying over. on a glide plant for the airport here. A big uh, low plane on its way in. So this top part folded down stationary. Underneath there's another scroll that orbits. It doesn't rotate, it orbits. So if you know how an orbiting sander works, the scroll compressor does sort of the same thing. Let me just make sure I got a good view here. And then I pull that top off. So I'm gonna take this off. And you can see the two scrolls. I'm gonna take my camera off here again. Oh, hang on, I guess I can't do that with my mouth. I gotta use both hands. Bottom orbiting scroll, top stationary scroll. And you can see how they mesh together and how that whole thing works. The stator would be underneath there. I don't know, I guess it's pretty dark down there, so you don't think you can see that. Um, but the motor would cause this to orbit. Actually, I can take this off as well. And, uh, So you can see as this motor goes around, that it would cause that scroll to, I don't think I can get it to turn. Let me try again. 
get that to mesh and do its thing, but I don't know that I will. No, that's hard to do, so I'm not gonna not gonna bother with that. But that's sort of how the internal parts of the scroll compressor work. So scrolls are very forgiving. Um, so on the top of this this head part. These scrolls will actually, if something happens that, you know, head pressure gets too high or liquid returns of the compressor, these scrolls will actually separate. They'll still be turning, but they'll separate, so there will be no pumping until pressures go back down again, and then they'll remesh again. And uh, it's, it makes a heck of a noise if you stood beside one when it happens. It's quite a quite an ordeal, but it does, scroll compressors are very forgiving. They do break, but they're very forgiving. Usually failures are electrical, um, sometimes mechanical, but not, um, not as often. Um, so that is kind of the nuts and bolts of the scroll compressor. And it's kind of cool how we found out what exactly caused this compressor to fail. Um, kind of, the, you know, if you ever do take these apart, that's one of the reasons you like to take them apart. Um, but one thing I didn't show you when I showed you the ports, there is another port down here. Um, and this is an oil level. It, it, they actually bolt an oil level control on here. This compressor would have been part of a rack. Rack just meaning there's more than one compressor. There's two, three, four, six, whatever, uh, parallel together. So common suction, common discharge. Um, so they usually have a oil management system. So a thing that bolts on here, a canister that bolts on here with a little float in it. Um, it could be mechanical like that. It could be electronic as well. Um, so and that maintains the level of oil in, in these compressors. Um, so that's what that fitting down there is. So that's the scroll compressor. Um, pretty cool when you look inside. Uh, so you know, there, there you have the, the bottom scroll, the orbiting scroll, top scroll, um, and they mesh together and does the job. The advantage to scroll, you know, why, why the heck do we need scroll compressors? So you think of the reciprocating compressor and you know, hopefully you've gone through the textbook and gone through a little bit, but there's efficiency losses in reciprocating compressors, um, re-expansion of gases, clearance, volumes, things like that. Uh, which you don't get with scroll compressors, so much more efficient if you re were to replace a reciprocating compressor with a scroll compressor, you can actually replace it with a smaller one and save energy, which is what the world's all about right now, saving energy. Um, so less electricity, uh, less money, all of that stuff. So uh, there's the scroll compressor. Um, I'm going to... The next video I'm going to uh, get into, uh, I'll probably do a uh, rotary compressor. Now I did start doing one and I had it cut open and um, found out that the rotary that I was gonna use uh, had been open and uh, I cut the top off. It was just a big mass of rust and sludge and it was pretty bad. So um, I didn't, uh, so that one's in the scrap and I'll get another one to uh, to do the rotary and so a couple more I've got the rotary do I'm gonna do the automotive one I'll do the service valve um, so some things to look forward to but that's the scroll compressor